guys, this is Mark. This is Michelle. Um, this is your Mark. autism. Oh. Or this is Mark and Michelle. Either way, <laughs> we call ourselves both. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, tonight we're uh, a little bit off script, kind of like well, kind of like we've been the past like, few nights. <clears throat> but uh, uh, we just thought we'd talk a little bit more about beliefs because we have encountered some beliefs today. They run into us like a big wall, right? And not our beliefs necessarily, mm -hmm. but other people's beliefs. And I'm going to start by saying this. Beliefs can keep you unhealthy. I promise they can. And as a friend of ours just said, <clears throat> she was complaining about, uh, she, she was talking about a woman in another group that she's in who is constantly saying negative stuff about healing her sons from autism. Right? And as our friend just said, you know, it's not like we're out here spreading lies. We're out here trying to help people have a real life instead of a life where they just do nothing but downplay other people's successes, right? That's what we're here for. We're here. Hi, Melissa. Hey, Melissa, how are you? Is it lunchtime? Is, Is it lunchtime? No, I guess it'll be Sunday, unless it's lunchtime on Sunday. <clears throat> but, um, uh, but we're here to help you move the beliefs out of your way that are keeping you unhealthy. That's part of what we do. Beliefs, yeah, I don't think it's an understatement to say this. Beliefs are everything. They are the, they are the world you live in externally. Yes. The beliefs you choose are the external world that you're going to encounter. They make up the external world you encounter because they're the filters that you see the world through. And so... If somebody told you you can't heal from autism and you didn't stop to uh, examine that uh, so-called truism, then you're just going to take it in wholeheartedly without examining it, without going, is this true for me? And see, and that's what people don't do a lot too. Think about it. Most people never examine their beliefs and go, is this true for me? Right. Right? All they do is just, oh, okay, well, it's just true. True? Really? True for who? Fortunately for me, as literally as I took stuff when I was autistic, fortunately for me, no one ever told me autism is incurable or unrecoverable. Or Fortunately, that didn't happen. Now, I think we thought that. Did we think that? Well, I thought that. Did you think that? I thought it was un I thought it was hardwired. Well, then you talk about that. Well, I mean, you've been that way your whole life with me, mm -hmm. and I hadn't seen any evidence of that changing, and that was before I knew you were autistic. Well, true. So true. A after we knew you were autistic, you were still the same as you were before we knew. Yeah. And I had seen no evidence of that being able to change. And then I started reading about autism. And what I was reading was that it couldn't be healed and that you were that way the rest of your life. And the groups that I was joining, people had been that way their whole lives. So I didn't think it could be changed, but I did not have something in me that said it, it absolutely can't be changed because I've always had a mind that wanted to expand. And so I never shut down the opportunity of something implanting in my mind that would say, you can heal this. And so I happened to hear this interview and I heard the word heal autism. And I went, I'm like, right here, that's sticking to me. What is that? And then I talked to Mark about it and we just decided to jump in to see if it would work. And then three years later, after we were on it, I, uh, she said, you know, I didn't think it would work. Then I looked at her with a cute smile and said, but aren't you glad that it did? You know? <laughs> and, so, and sure enough. But then we were stuck again. And I was like, well, maybe we can't do anything with this. I mean, we've come a long way with this, but, but maybe he's not going to be a normal person ever and that was before we found the medical medium and the heavy metal yeah. detox movie and that was before and, and and he was getting harder to live with again and i was like there's got to be something i don't know what if i kept my mind open and bam medical medium showed up see 
that she finally got to what she was saying. She kept her mind open. Yes. All right. We're running into so many people. We're like, no, it can't happen. Wow. Uh, then. Then it's not going to happen for you. No, it sure isn't. Because you won't allow anything in that might change your life. Keeping a closed mind will kill you. When oh, it comes we know to your some health. people who have died. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm going to say that again, but I'm going to add an extra word. A closed mind will literally kill you. Because we've talked to some of those people who have died. We talked to them before they died. We said, hey, this is an option. Seriously, we know others. We have heard of others who have recovered from cancer, uh, heart disease, whatever. And... They didn't listen. And and that's okay, okay? That's okay. That's their journey. That's what they, I believe that's what was supposed to happen for them. But what I'm telling you is you don't have to have that happen to you. Right. So never close your mind. Ever. This whole thing, and I don't know if folks in other countries hear this much, but here in the U.S., uh, especially in more conservative circles, you'll, you'll either see this as a bumper sticker or you'll hear, hear people say this. Stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Well, I'm going to reword that. Stand for anything and you'll fall for anything. Because just because you stand up for belief, if you haven't ever checked to see if it's going to work for you, then you're standing up for nothing. See if the beliefs work for you. For instance, if you have a belief about yourself that says, oh, I never could learn to drive a car, you won't learn to drive a car. Oh, I never could learn math. You're right. You can. I think it was Henry Ford who said, if you believe you can or if you believe you're, you can't, you're right. Yep, you're right. And, and have I had to change beliefs doing this? Yes. Hundreds of them. And I do mean hundreds of them. I've been changing them today. Yes. <laughs> you, you always have to look at your beliefs in life and about the beliefs you have about life. Otherwise, you, what you do is your beliefs will fence you in, close you off, and you will die. You will be living in a cardboard box. If you don't actually die physically, and you might, you will definitely die spiritually and emotionally. By your beliefs if you don't check them and get rid of the ones that don't help you i promise i've seen it happen to people i've seen it ha it's happened to me which is why i had to start healing because well and michelle did too she her health was so bad when she first started this back in 2008 that she thought she was pretty close to dying i thought i was headed that way and she had to change her beliefs she wrote affirmations pages after pages there was a i we took a picture of it and i still need to find that picture but after all the pages of affirmation she wrote was well over two-thirds of a meter, well over two-thirds of a meter high. In other words, about two feet high. I didn't know where to start, so I saw this book. I read it. I said, okay, I'm going to try this. And the book was? Louise Hayes, How to Heal Your Life. Uh, you Can Heal Your Life. And you know what that book is about? It's about beliefs. Yeah. The first five or six chapters are nothing but and they start each chapter starts out starts out with a list of beliefs and she says if you believe any of these then you won't have what you have need and she says and here's how to change it she gives you the techniques in the book how to change it affirmations is one uh, visualizations is visualizations another uh, forgiveness another and beliefs literally make your life when i found eft that really fast forwarded me yes Mm -hmm. and, and because EFT can move out a lot of the emotions that support your belief system. Right. Which is why we talk about beliefs and energy medicine and stuff so much is because you, for instance, if you believe that you can't lose weight, you won't. And E and the, uh, the uh, inventors of EFT actually have a weight loss program geared towards removing the beliefs and the emotions behind weight loss so that people can lose weight. And it works. Well, I also think there's the backed up liver. Well, that's an option too. That. There is a physicality. Well, let's see, opening up those those beliefs. Right. 
may uh, lead you it into allows you to go into the physical change. Uh, exactly. And so, uh, again, uh, just as an example today, I've run into a couple of people who uh, uh, were upset at us because uh, we're lying. They, they think we're lying because, oh, you can't heal autism. It's incurable, whatever. You know what? The brain is not separate from the body. And since it isn't, whatever happens to the body happens to the brain. So if the body can heal, forget the head for a minute. If any of the rest of the body can heal, the brain must heal as well. The brain does not live independently from your body. So any poisons that your body contains, your brain does too. And, and don't give me the crap about the blood-brain barrier. Why do you think uh, meningitis is such an issue? Because it does cross the blood-brain barrier. And it aggravates all the meninges, the three layers that surround the central nervous system. So <clears throat> while you have a blood-brain barrier, chemicals and toxins can cross it as well. So <clears throat> the, all the science behind it backs it up. And I'll tell you a very interesting thing. I hear the medical community say autism can't be cured. But the science community, they're talking about all the issues with autism, like heavy metals and toxins and viruses, viruses and, and bacteria. They're talking about all of that stuff. And I have not yet come across a paper in, this, in all of scientific research, PubMed or PubMed Central, that says autism is incurable. I have not. And neither will you. So... <clears throat> Remember, your beliefs will literally keep you from the life you want. Because fear is a belief, too. So if you fear, that's just another belief. So you can change that fear by feeling it through, first of all, and then going in, either using EFT on it or affirmations or deconstructing it. My favorite tool is deconstructing fears. And you'll find that they're, they're almost always nonsensical and based on chance. Oh, it might happen. <clears throat> yeah, it might, but likely it won't. So remember, your beliefs really determine your life. They make you or they break you. And uh, again, as we've talked about, We've spent so many years. We spent so many years changing our beliefs before we even decided to embark on well, getting healthy. That might have been necessary before we could get to the point where we would meet this medical meeting. Well, and and I think that is a good point because uh, as we've talked out through this whole, well, I sound like I'm on a, a preacher on a pulpit at this point, but uh, uh, kind of true to my heritage. <laughs> but uh, uh, but really, that's it. I mean, you. Changes won't take place in your life outwardly until they take place inwardly. And <clears throat> say that again, that's important. <clears throat> changes in your outward life won't take place until changes have taken place inwardly in your inward life. And I I even oddly enough, <clears throat> even before we started on changing our belief systems about anything. I knew that if I changed how I thought about something, and I, I remember a couple of instances when I was autistic that that actually happened, that it changed my life. And I thought, huh, you know, there is some truth in that because I remember that happening even when I was autistic, long before I met Michelle, long before I knew anything about Louise Hay or beliefs or anything else, you know. And <clears throat> this has happened for both of us in huge ways. It's, it's, it, there have been times when changing beliefs using EFT and forgiveness and stuff like that has changed our lives overnight. Yeah, the next day it's different. Yep, next day it's different and everything is different. And that has... And it's the same people? Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you'll be in with the same group of people, but because you changed you, they treat you entirely differently. Yeah. And so if you have beliefs about autism can't be cured, it can't be recovered, why not? Don't tell me it's hardwired because if it is, then the rest of your body must not be because it heals. If it was hardwired, if, if an autistic brain was hardwired, it could never heal and it could never change. But then you obviously never heard of the concept of neuroplasticity. And don't BS me with the, oh, well, it's not what you think it is. Yeah, it's not what I think it is. It's what science thinks it is. Okay, so just go with that. So anyway, uh, what else do we want to talk about beliefs? 
I don't know. I don't know. Well, are there any questions? There's nobody here. Okay. That, well, there is. Taj and Melissa. Are they still here? Yep. I think you're still here. But anyway, guys, uh, if you have any comments, maybe they are. Okay. But anyway, but no. But remember, beliefs are really are the most important things in changing your life. Because when you change them, you can see your outward life change overnight. That's probably enough. Yep. And uh, that is our short show for tonight. And we're off tomorrow night. But remember, keep doing that celery juice and the heavy metal detox smoothie and the lemon water. water. This sounds like Wayne's World. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, you can oh, download the book at www.healyourautism.com yeah, slash buy the book. book. Right. And uh, then uh, you can get started doing this for yourself. All right, guys. See you tomorrow, or see you Monday. See you Monday. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.